All right, joining the studio this time around for another journey by local obstetrician Simon Craig. Welcome. Thanks, Kev. Now, this is a, uh, a first for me because I think even over all my years in the media and, and living in Albury Wodonga, we haven't really crossed paths in this setting, but you did deliver one of my children, would you believe? Um, I'm going to test you on this one. A brow presentation, emergency cesarean about nine years ago. Do you remember it? <laughs> yeah, I don't remember, remember the name of the baby, but uh, <laughs> yeah, there's not that many brow presentations around. So yeah, yeah, thanks for reminding me about that. <laughs> Let, let's talk about, uh, about you uh, living in Albury, Wodonga. We always uh, start these journeys with a bit of a background. Have yes. you lived here all your life? What brought you here? Give us that picture first. Yeah. No, I haven't lived here all my life. I actually came to Australia uh, from England with my parents when I was four, and they emigrated to Australia with two children, myself and my older brother, and mum and dad had another baby when they got to Australia. So, yeah, so that was our our, uh, entry to Australia, and we... First lived in a migrant hostel, but it wasn't Bonagilla, it was in Fairfield. And uh, then we mostly stayed in Melbourne, went to Geelong a little bit, but then back to Melbourne and grew up in Melbourne largely. Uh, and have been here for 20 years or so now. Yeah. 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 And so are you here with any of your other family? Did they come this direction or you, you professionally have come here? Or? Uh, yeah, I went to school in the northern suburbs of Melbourne. Then went to Melbourne University and uh, got specialised in obstetrics and gynaecology. Finished my training and was looking for somewhere to settle down. Uh, we had three children at that stage, uh, my wife and I, and um, we didn't want to be in the city. We wanted to be somewhere big enough to support specialist practice and somewhere where you could do everything and a nice place to live. And we looked around and we came here for a year initially and then have stayed for 20 years and uh, two more children later. Yeah, that's how we come to be here. And yeah. What was the lure to, to hanging around? What, what, what was the thing that took you uh, maybe by surprise if it was only planned to be here for a year? Yeah, it was a year with a view to stay. It was um, The attraction was partly the size, partly the location, close enough to Melbourne, um, close enough to both sets of parents, in, you know, in case as they aged, they uh, became sick and things. The medical community in Albury Wodonga was a big attraction. We, I personally was pretty impressed because every different specialty was really well supported and manned, if you like, and with quality people. So it was a really good sort of medical community to join. And um, and, and and as it's turned out, my parents both, uh, moved to Wodonga after we'd been here for a few years, and they've both passed away, but um, so spent a bit more time with them, and um, yeah. Somewhere to raise the kids as well. Yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. So, obstetrics, where did your desire to get into that field <laughs> come from? When does that moment happen that you go, oh, I think I'll yeah. go and do that? You know, bringing life into the world's a pretty special thing. Yeah, it is. It is when you sort of take a step, step back and think about it, I guess. It's like anything. It's, it's, you know, you do a job and you think it's a job and uh, and it's probably interesting to other people, but maybe not so yourself. And you look at other jobs and think, oh, that's interesting. But as far as obstetrics, when you're a medical student and you're, you're doing different things, obstetrics has always got a lure for medical students. It's always really interesting because you feel like you're, you're doing something, you're part of something that's quite exciting. And so a lot of medical students think that they might want to be obstetricians when they're medical students and then later on realise that the life of an obstetrician is not really what they want. For me, I was going to be a country GP and I did a lot of GP training and then I realised that that when I was actually doing procedures and things, that was when I was most happy and I went off and started my obstetric training and was lucky enough to get in really and, and, and do that. It's been great. It's been a great career. Obstetrics and gynaecology is great because you do have the baby aspect and the delivery aspect and everything, mm. but you've also got the gynaecological aspect, so a lot of surgery and things, and they're, they're very complementary, I think. And the other reason I didn't particularly want to stay in Melbourne was that most people just do obstetrics or just do gynae and have to specialise, uh, sub-specialise a little bit more, whereas here, all of us do everything, and I th- that's actually really great for us and... Um, 
yeah, it's great to be able to do everything and not feel like you're only doing one thing all the time. Mm. Yeah. You spoke briefly there, a past comment on, on the workload. Um, I'm assuming you're referring to calls at different times, days and nights. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's one of the negative <laughs> aspects. <laughs> and you never get used to it and you never like it. <laughs> but um, but I, I, I think really what we all sort of consider is that when you get called, you, you're getting called because someone needs help or that you're going in because you can help someone. And that's a, a, a nice thing, even though, you know, we might be a little bit grumpy and tired and and stuff it, it's still it's still a privilege to be in that position i think that we should all not lose sight of that mm. yeah how many babies do you think you've delivered over the uh 20 odd years on the border 20 plus years if you had to guess is it a guess or do you sort of know do you know no, do, do, do medicare I, send you a letter and go congratulations, no, congratulations here's a pin for hit, racking up ten thousand births or yeah no <laughs> I, I i don't really know but uh, somewhere you know it'd be thousands i suppose but um yeah, I don't really have an exact number for yeah. you, I'm sorry. No, that's all right. It's, it's one of those intriguing things I couldn't let the moment pass to yeah. to ask. Yeah. So juggling, um, you know, the, the, I guess the different rosters that you'd be on through the health system, your own practice, yep. your own family, yep. um, how do you find the work-life balance? Yeah, yeah it's difficult. I, I, I think as I get older... I mean, I think that your greatest strength is always your greatest weakness. And um, I think one of my strengths has been I work hard and I've always prided myself on being able to work hard. And that's a, a really good thing. And it's great for, you know, your job and your practice and all this. But I think there are negatives with that. Mm. And I think the negatives are your own time and your own family suffers a little bit. Kind of realised that a little bit more the last few years, which... You know, doesn't make you feel great, but you also, it's hard to know how to do it otherwise, you know. So when you do get spare time, mm. what we find you doing? What's your relaxing or your, have you got a little hobby or something that you're into? We live um, out of town. We've got a, a small um, little hobby farm sort of thing, I guess. And so we have some cows and, and there's a big garden and um, we do a fair bit of gardening and some of that sort of stuff. Um, we have three kids living in Melbourne now, so there's a little bit of travel associated there and, yeah, these sorts of things keep yeah. us busy. And if you were to, um, you know, be described by somebody else, <laughs> what would they describe you as? Uh, how would they describe hmm. you? Well, I would hope they would say <laughs> caring, kind, hardworking, um, honourable, I suspect they would probably say grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> it all fits the job description. <laughs> um, is there any uh, anything now that you could share with me that not many people would know about you? I've written a children's book. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Which is not available because it's not published. It's just at my house. Well, I've actually done two, but the first one was really bad. And the first one I, I just did with the older kids when they were young and just wrote involving them as characters in this story. And it was mostly just a fun thing. And we have a set of twins now who are 11. And uh, I wrote one's into dance and one's into music. And I, I wrote this children's book with characters based on their personality and based around dance and music and uh, things. And it was it's more fun and it's just a way of connecting with the girls and and yeah and I can guarantee that it will not be a best bestseller and it probably won't ever be published but it it's still been fun for us for me to write something and them to read it with me or yeah. whatever yeah have you drawn the pictures to go with it no, but, yeah, that's maybe the next step. <laughs> <laughs> well, never doubt. You never know. It could be. You, you, you can never pick a bestseller. You hidden don't talents. Know. Yeah, yeah. That's, well, that's, that's, a, that's a very uh, – I think that out of the whole uh, journey <laughs> series I've done so far, that's one of the best kept secrets right. that I've received. So oh, right. Well, I feel if privileged you, future guests that. will have to lift their game <laughs> and come up with something. <laughs> Are you a philosophical sort of person, Simon? You got, yeah. some, you got some quotes or anything that you'd like to, like to share with us? I really like the quote, and I believe it was President Truman, the American president at the end of the Second World War, who said something um, that it's amazing how much good you can do in the world if you don't care who gets the credit. And I think that's 
are really, when you think about it in business, in any organisation, I think that's, yeah, it's a great quote. Mm. Yeah, so really you just, you do it, you don't look for the satisfaction or, or recognition. No, do good things for and, the team. And somebody else will, will benefit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, that's the, in a nutshell, isn't it? That's yeah. a great one. Yeah. Jeez, I'm happy you came in. <laughs> oh, all right, two good things. <laughs> um, if you had any regrets in life, you're a regretful person? No. Well, personally, I think that, that what I mentioned about, you know, sometimes negatives for your family with work, life balance, as you say, I think that's something that you, it's hard to reconcile things like that. And you don't know, you, you, everyone works, tries to get ahead in life and things. I think uh, with the nature of my work, uh, which is, as you say, fantastic job and bringing life into the world and all that, but sometimes outcomes aren't great and you do feel bad for people that have poor outcomes, you know, things like stillbirth or whatever it is, um, and you would, you know, love to change that for people, but it's just the job has amazing highs but lows as well. Mm. How do you handle that? I think it's better with experience, but it still, it still sort of gets to us, and I think it has to get to us because we have to be human and we have to be feel for people, or else we're we're not doing our job properly, and um, we have to take joy in their good moments. But you know, there's sorrow there too. Yeah. Mm. How um yeah, put it as a blanket sort of uh, percentage over it. How much more sorrow is there than the joy in your job? Oh, I'd say probably maybe you'd have 20 good days for one bad day or yeah. 50 good days for one bad day, something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. But just the, the bad ones would be really tough. Yeah, yeah, and it's tough for families. But on the flip side of that, we, we do see ladies that have and families that have gone through hard times and um, and we might see them for the next baby. And, you know, and that's fantastic. Mm. That's really good. Yeah, yeah, when I've, everything goes well. Yeah. Well, we've got five children, and, and you know, other than a bit of asthma and things like that, you yeah. always you know, count your lucky stars because so many people that don't get that joy in life for yeah, whatever I, reason. Mm. Yeah, that's right. And yeah, and I, I think all of us forget how blessed we are sometimes. Yeah. Mm. What's the best decision you've ever made in life? I think probably not a split second decision. I think I made a decision when I was. Uh, 16, 17, that I was going to lift my game and start working really hard at school. And I absolutely studied to the detriment of a lot of other activities in year 12 and was lucky enough to, you know, do quite well academically and get to uni. Mm. And really, I think that's probably been a good thing that's happened. Was it something that came easy to you or was it damn hard work and determination to get a good academic result? I think hard work is probably rather than sort of brilliance is my <laughs> is my key. Yeah, so I worked pretty hard and yeah, was lucky. You remember it as a child, you know? Do I do I have to study? Yeah. What's, what's life really about? Particularly when you come through adolescence, yeah. And then you become a parent and you try to keep your own kids on track. How have you gone with that? The first three kids who are in their twenties now are um, all did pretty well at school. And I think they've all got a pretty good work ethic. I think it's a very different world these days. It's not as clear for you when you do go through school what path to take. I think it's a a lot harder for kids these days. Whereas for me, you know, get your marks, go into your course, come out at the end. And it's not, doesn't seem to be as straightforward as that now. Mm. Yeah. Um, Work ethic, something you mentioned in there. Is that something you think all parents should hope their kids have? Oh, well, we all would, wouldn't we? We'd all hope for that, I guess. Um, yeah. How you instill that, that's that's the secret that I don't have and, <laughs> and I can't uh, pass on. Um, but I think, you know, uh, kids see parents working hard, kids see parents doing the right thing and model. You think they'd hopefully follow suit with the right guidance? You would hope so, wouldn't you? But, mm-hmm. yeah, it's not as easy as all parents know. It's not as easy as you might hope or think. Yeah. Um, so working as a obstetrician yep. or a gynaecologist, you're yep. obviously working under a government health system and obviously private system as well. Mm. Do you ever get frustrated? Do you ever think, uh, I could do this better myself? Do you ever have a burning political desire? We can all do things better than everyone else, can't we? <laughs> we all know that. I don't have any political desire. I, I think some sometimes 
you look at the decisions made and they seem a bit hard to fathom. I guess, again, I, I used to get a bit upset about it, but I guess people go into politics with good intentions and um, there's a lot of layers that we don't know about. That, But they're probably, well, I would hope they were all good people starting off and ha- still have good intentions that get stirred up in the in the mix, I guess. A difficult yeah. game yeah. to be part of. Yeah. How many more years do you think you have in your <laughs> profession? Uh I don't know. We've got some challenges on the border with the um, proposed move of, well, the upcoming move of obstetrics to Albury, whenever that may be, um, and that's not clear when that will happen, but that might define my work life a little bit, possibly. I'm 52. Um, I don't know. Um don't know. <laughs> Day by day. <laughs> <laughs> what's, uh, what's a busy day for you? It turns, you know, the phone runs hot, you're needed. There's an emergency cesarean, there's a yeah. this, there's a that, there's the other. Yeah, what, yeah. What is a chaotic day in your life? Yeah, pretty chaotic, yeah. The hardest thing in anyone's life, whether that's my life or your life, Travis' life, we is trying to be in more than one place at one time. We all know that, you know, you're on, you're working and a child rings you and they need to be picked up or something. It's... It's really stressful. So trying to limit those stresses is is important. Um, and for instance, in our field, if we're operating on someone and we have to go and deliver a baby or we've got other stuff happening at home, that's quite stressful. And that's where, uh, I, well, for one, family have to be very forgiving in our field. We rely heavily on other people such as uh, midwives, but also particularly at work in, with our secretaries mm-hmm. who might reschedule a whole day and, and we rely on other patients being patient enough to, to put up with that sort of thing because they think, well, next time that might be me that's involved with the emergency that the doctors run off to do. So, yeah, it can be that a day goes from a pretty straightforward consulting day to actually no consultations and in theatre all day or in labour ward dealing with emergencies and things and it can get quite messy and unfortunately, a day is 24 hours, and <laughs> and so it might take longer than working hours. So, Would you feel at times that you're still trying to catch up? Oh, yeah. When you have an emergency day like that thrown in yeah, the mix? Yeah, Because yeah, yeah, people absolutely. continue to fall pregnant and have got their appointments months in advance. Yeah, uh, yeah, and we do have to sort of fit people in. And, and, and most people around here are, are really good about that. We never get anyone saying, oh, you know, you messed me up yesterday. They always say, that's okay, and... and that's really good, but yeah, we are trying to catch up a lot, and we're also trying to catch up with other stuff that we might have planned, or uh, sometimes with sleep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hence the grumpiness. <laughs> um, earlier in the interview, uh, you know, you mentioned that whole getting into med school and going down the obstetrics. But as a kid, you know, a lot of people are like I'm going to be a superhero or a fire yeah. fighter. Or, yeah. What was what was your thing? Um, what do you think you're going to be when you grow up? I don't know. My mum used to say that I said she she had quite bad rheumatoid arthritis, and she used to say, say when I was a kid I said I would be a doctor and I would fix her and cure her. When I was a child, I don't remember saying that. No, I managed to achieve one of those um one of those ambitions, but I certainly didn't cure her. So maybe that I I had other interests. I, I actually thought I might be an engineer or a geologist. One thing I always wanted though, and I was involved in a lot of sport as a child. One thing I always wanted, I was always wanted to be part of a team that had a great team ethic and had fun and things like that and worked hard but just got the balance right because, you know, the team that hums really gets everything done and it's good to look forward to going to work and seeing people and we all know that if you've got one painful person, and maybe that's me, but one <laughs> painful person at work, it makes it difficult for everyone and, and if you've got a really good team ethos it, it just it's great you know yeah. and 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 we certainly have that at our practice at the moment and and we have it in our ward and I kind of wanted to feel more than a particular career I think I recall um you know it was at my wife's first pregnancy um and I mentioned before you know brow presentation we hadn't done any na- antenatal classes or anything we were flying blind and we both had the philosophy well the medical experts will tell us where we need to be and when <laughs> And I remember getting raced off to be put into the scrubs and my wife was already in theatre and by the time I came in, I think you're at the point of going, yeah, I think it's a nine-pound baby. What do you think to one of your colleagues? It was what you've just uh, described, a very fun 
atmosphere. Yeah. Um, how are you at guessing the weight of things? Are you usually <laughs> what's your track record like? No, not so not so good. Um, <laughs> Uh, you got ours. You said nine uh, pound. It was spot on. Yeah, it was. I mean, yeah, nice big baby. <laughs> and patients, if there's anyone watching this, well, I'm sure there's lots. Should take some um, comfort if we're in theatre and they're awake, having a, an operation, having a cesarean section, which is an unusual thing to have an operation where you're awake. Mm. Stressful sort of situation. And if the the team is, you know, sort of seeming to talk about other stuff and talk, they they should take great heart in that because it means everything's going well for one and the team's comfortable and relaxed and so we actually work pretty hard to to keep things a little bit light not Mm. silly not flippant but a little bit light just to so that everyone's at ease my lasting memory of that is good. All um, right. <laughs> I'd like to point out too that uh, for the first medical related uh, subject for a journey, you showed up on time. So I want that to be on the record. You've now represented every doctor ever that <laughs> people you. have doubted yep. you showed yep. up on time today, <laughs> <laughs> which is a positive that we take away from that, even despite the emergency calls and all different bits of people. And, and the other thing I'd like to add is the bills in the mail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course it is. If you're given the chance to change anything, in your life, is there anything there that you'd go? Oh, I might have turned left instead of right. Yeah, we all. I think we all think that sometimes about things, but it's hard to know, isn't it? Because you'd be a different person, and 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 you wouldn't be where you are. And what other things would come with that change? I, I don't know. So I try not to sort of do that a lot. You know, I mean, after a busy night or a difficult time, you might think, "Geez, it would have been easier if I'd done." surgery or I'd done this or that but but then the the highs of what what my work life entails I wouldn't get that so no I think look forward yeah yeah do you ever wonder the story of the children that you've delivered do you ever yeah oh, yeah yeah do you yeah, ever stop yeah and, and it's it's great to see kids and uh, you know I see some with my own children going through school or different things and it's it's really nice and it, it and it also comes back to you reflecting on your own children and thinking, you know, what an amazing day that is having a baby. Mm. It's it's incredible, really, isn't it? It's life-changing. It's addictive, yeah. I find. <laughs> well, well, I think that's the reason everyone yeah. thinks that TV's broken. But <laughs> 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 that's that feeling. Um, now, if someone was to play you in a movie about your life, mm. who would you like it to be? I'm not sure who I'd like it to be, but my Children tell me when I pull faces I look like Mr. Bean. <laughs> so maybe Rowan Atkinson. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, what what song would feature in the soundtrack of your life? I think I'll I'll go with the opera song Ness and Dorma by Pavarotti. Um, partly because it's fantastic, <laughs> but also because it means no sleep. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> yep. appropriate. Um, so, yeah, Rowan Atkinson singing Ness and Dorma. That would be <laughs> quite good. <laughs> That's great. Uh, if you could be anywhere in the world tomorrow and have anyone you with you, where would you be? What would yeah. you be doing? It's nice to do things with people, I think, like to be active with people. So I, one thing I, I actually would like to do is uh, a couple of things, a long walk with people. And, and my family originally from the northeast of England, um, and I'd like to do... Uh, the Hadrian's Wall walk, where uh, Emperor Hadrian built the wall across northern England to stop the Scots coming down. And um, and you can walk across England and still see some of that walk, for instance. That would be great. Uh, who would I like to do it with? I'd probably like to do it with family and also friends from different stages of my life that you fall out of touch with and that you maybe don't put enough time into. Mm. Yeah, so well, we're all, guilty, all those but people... Absolutely, and um, have everyone together. I mean, that would be a, a nice thing. Be a fair mission. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> most of them would probably once. be too lazy to do the walk. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you uh, you know, if you come across a, a student now, you know, I'm, I'm sure you see them coming through, looking hmm. at obstetrics, looking at career head. What's the advice that you give them? Yeah, it depends on what sort of day I've had. Whether I <laughs> say, you know, uh, don't don't do it. It's too hard, too exhausting, too too much time commitment. But it's still been a great career, and um, and as we said, the highs and lows, and you know that's a, it's a very rich 
life really experience um, that I think we're very lucky. Mm. Um, how long will I work? You asked me before. And I think working in obstetrics does shorten people's career compared to, and I, I think that's the same with anyone who does mm. night duty or, you know, that sort of hours. I think that does shorten your life, your working life. Well, I think that'll do us, Simon Craig. I do thank you so much for, for squeezing this in. I, for quite a few months, your name was uh, thrown around as we need to find out you know, what that career is like, what he's like, what makes him tick. And we've, I think we've successfully done that today. And whilst you think people will think of you as a grumpy person, <laughs> um, you have shown it quite a fun side. So I do appreciate that. Thanks, Kev. Thank you. <laughs>